The day began with the end of the last class at Katajiri High School. A girl looked lethargic because she got words of encouragement or more in the form of insults from her teacher. The girl's name was Kyuko Hori, and who was famous in school for her beauty and intelligence. Due to her popularity, a male student asked for her email address through Yuki Yoshikawa, although Hori did not give it in the end. Hori was invited to karaoke with her three friends, but as usual, Hori refused. Unexpectedly, Hori's book fell and was picked up by a gloomy-faced student named Izumi Miyamura. Turu Ishikawa said that no one would want to hang out with Miyamura. Soon the conversation about Miyamura was cut short because Hori had to rush out of school. This led to her friend's assumption that Hori could come home early for a date. Contrary to that assumption, Hori came home early because she wanted to do her homework immediately and picked up her little brother Sada Hori at school. She also had to prepare dinner because her mother had to work late as usual. The next day, Hori, who was washing clothes, was startled to see Sada, who had a nosebleed and was seen being escorted by someone who looked eccentric. Hori finally invited the man to stop by and drink coffee while conversing. That person also said he was amazed by Hori's ability to care for the house alone. But how surprised Hori was when that person said that he was Miyamura, her classmate. Hori felt a little awkward. Miyamura even thought that Hori would avoid him. But Hori instead invited Miyamura to chat and even asked him to come back to the house at Sauda's request. Miyamura immediately welcomed the invitation. Since then, Miyamura often went to Hori's house. They got closer. Hori learned a few things about Miyamura, including he pierced himself with a pin in middle school. From there, many of Hori's assumptions about Miyamura, including academic matters, were immediately shattered. So close Hori even got Miyamura to buy eggs that were being discounted at the convenience store when he was at a meeting. At that moment, their classmate Yuki accidentally saw Miyamura's different appearance. This made Hori jealous. She didn't like it when anyone saw this eccentric-looking Miyamura besides herself. Unexpectedly, Miyamura also said the same thing. He also said that he didn't like it when the grumpy side of Hori got angry and ignored appearances being seen by other people. Turu, who noticed Hori and Miyamura's closeness, started talking to Miyamura. Here it was revealed the fact that Turu liked Hori. Turu also discovered the tattoos and piercings on Miyamura's body in the changing room. Long story short, Turu confessed his feelings to Hori, but Hori rejected him. But Hori instead focused on Miyamura, who said they were incompatible and Hori was just being nice to Miyamura. That said, Miyamura did it to protect Hori's reputation. Instead of being happy, this annoyed Hori, and she threatened Miyamura to stay away from her. <laughs> Unusually, Hori's mother came home early and asked about Miyamura a lot. She asked about what he was like and what his full name was. Hori, who realized she didn't know Miyamura's full name, immediately tried everything to find out, even peeking into the boy's changing room. But she also assumed that Miyamura would tell her mother his name when Miyamura visited her house the next day. Instead, her mother asked Hori to shop so she could privately chat with Miyamura. Still unsure, Miyamura thought Hori was starting to get attracted to someone because she had been acting weird lately. Hori finally asked directly but was laughed at by Miyamura even though in the end, Miyamura told her his full name. The next day, Hori was again given a lot of assignments by the student council president, Kakiru Sengoku. Even though she said it was okay, Miyamura knew Hori was tired and tried to think of things to cheer her up. But suddenly, Remy Ayasaki accidentally bumped into him and dropped a document. The next morning, Hori was accused by the student council members because the documents she submitted today were incomplete. Even though Hori was sure, she had collected everything, including the financial document. The student council members then demanded Hori to apologize. 
Until Miyamura came to butt Sengoku's head and took out the missing financial document earlier, he also explained yesterday's incident when Ayasaki bumped into him and instead told him to throw the document away. Finally, the student council members apologized to Hori for accusing her wrongly. Here, it was also revealed that Hori and Sengoku were childhood friends. They used to be very close until they entered high school. And that was one of the reason why Hori wanted to help student council assignments. It was time for Hori's birthday, celebrated by Sauda and Miyamura alone. They each gave Hori a gift. Miyamura handed Hori a CD of his favorite songs. The gift was exactly what Hori wanted, because she had no idea what music was trending among students. Hori's birthday marked the end of spring break, meaning they would soon be entering their third grade. Miyamura always had no friends. Even in every group work, Miyamura was always the one who was left out. That was why he got himself pierced in middle school. High school was similar. Many people didn't want to hang out with him because they thought Miyamura was a gloomy child. But Hori took the initiative to talk to him and believe that Miyamura was more cheerful. The new school year had started. Hori, Miyamura, Turu, Yuki, and Suyura reunited in the same class. When the teacher asked them to split into groups, the bad memories of being an outcast student haunted Miyamura. But all that was immediately refuted when Hori Yuki and Turu joined their table with Miyamura's. Now Miyamura had friends, unlike 10 years ago. The next morning, Hori, who had left early, thinking there was a meeting, met Remy. Remy then asked if she could take Miyamura from Hori after learning they were just friends. Hori firmly replied, even though they were just friends, Miyamura was hers, and no one could take Miyamura from her. It was known by Turu, who accidentally eavesdropped from behind the wall. Turu then told Miyamura that Hori loved him. Miyamura was evasive and felt that Hori only saw him as a friend. But Turu persisted with his hypothesis, which ended in a small fight. <laughs> <laughs> Hori bought Miyamura and Turu ice cream the next day because the weather was so hot. After that, they intercepted Sengoku, and they ended up chatting. They talked about the privileges that Sengoku got as the student council president, one of which was an air-conditioned room. Then they asked Sengoku to use the room as their gathering place. After school, Hori and Miyamura worked on an assignment together. Hori was amazed that Miyamura had never seemed shy about anything. Miyamura even undressed when Hori told him to. But in fact, it was not so. Miyamura even blushed when his middle school friend Koichi Shindu thought Hori was Miyamura's girlfriend. It was also the first time Hori had seen Miyamura angry. It turned out that there were still many sides of Miyamura that Hori didn't know about. Shindu was the only person who wanted to hang out with Miyamura when they were in middle school. Even though another friend blocked him, Shindu ignored it and remained friends with Miyamura. According to Miyamura, Shindu had changed his middle school life and Hori had changed his high school life. Hori had a fever the next day and insisted on going to school, but Suda forbade her. He asked Hori to rest at home. In her sleep, Hori dreamt of her childhood, where her mother always left her to work even when she was sick. Saba then called Miyamura to tell him about Hori's condition. Miyamura then came to her house and took care of Hori, who was sick. Hori, always left by her mother when she was sick, became sensitive even when Miyamura wanted to get her a drink. She thought that Miyamura would also leave her. After confirming that the fever had subsided, Miyamura took his leave. But before he left, Miyamura said that he loved Hori. This made Hori panic, but she also thought of pretending she didn't hear it so they wouldn't be awkward later. After school, Sauda told Hori that he saw Miyamura with a girl from another school, and they were holding hands. This irritated and confused Hori, and ended with her avoiding Miyamura at school. Hori still wanted to avoid Miyamura when she wanted to go home from school. But since Miyamura brought up the topic of his declaration of love yesterday, Hori worked up the courage to ask about the girl Sauda told about yesterday. Mayora said Hori misunderstood. The girl yesterday was Chika de Chiju, Shindu's girlfriend. They joined hands because Miyamura supported Chika, who was having trouble walking. But that answer did not satisfy Hori, and she threw the book she was carrying into Miyamura's face. Chika-chan? 
チカちゃんがつまずいて足くじいちゃってだから別にチカちゃんはチカチカチカチカチカだって Hori wasn't angry because Miyamura and Chika were together, but because of how Miyamura addressed Chika. The problem was solved when Miyamura said he didn't know Chika's surname. They then returned to the topic of the time Miyamura confessed his love to Hori. Hori said that she woke up and heard everything. Miyamura later apologized for running away because he was afraid to hear Hori's response to his feelings. But before the conversation could continue, a man with a cigarette in his hand walked into the room. It turned out to be Kyusu Kori, Hori's father. After a lot of talking, Hori finally introduced Miyamura as her boyfriend. Hori and Miyamura were now officially dating. Miyamura. Nani, Hori san? Hori san. Hori san no koto. Shitte ikeru to ii. Otagai sama desu. Ja. Turu, who already knew about Hori and Miyamura's relationship, became gloomy, even though he didn't show it to anyone. But there was someone who noticed his moodiness, namely Sakura Kaono. She felt insecure because she was not as cute as Remy or as beautiful as Hori. Sakura then found out that she had a crush on Turu. As usual, Hori and Miyamura would do homework together at Hori's house. Not much had changed since they started dating. Including their ridiculous fights. In short, Miyamura was getting closer to Kyosuke. But more precisely, Kyosuke was obsessed with Miyamura. Kyosuke even invited Miyamura to take a bath together. Miyamura was also told to spend the night at Hori's house. Miyamura was even asked to share a room with Kyosuke. Kyosuke had asked why Miyamura liked Hori, which Miyamura immediately answered. Miyamura replied that he liked Hori's character of not judging someone by appearances alone. The next day, news of Hori and Miyamura's relationship spread at school when a student saw them leaving the same house to go to school. They didn't expect the beautiful and smart Hori to date the gloomy boy Miyamura. The next day, Miyamura came to school with a different appearance that even his classmates didn't recognize. Instead of being happy, this annoyed Hori because female students surrounded Miyamura. Many were impolite to take pictures of Miyamura carelessly. The next day, Miyamura was noticed. And even followed by a girl named Hinoka Sawada from grade two. At first, they thought that Sawada liked Miyamura, but it turned out that Sawada liked Hori and was her fan. She didn't like it when a guy like Miyamura was dating Hori. Since then, Sawada and Miyamura never got along because they fought over Hori. The funny thing was that they lived in the same apartment building and were next door. Long story short, Miyamura invited Sawada to come to his apartment while waiting for his parents to come home. From their conversation, Miyamura learned that Sawada had an older brother who had died. Another day, Turu accidentally spilled a drink on Sakura while going to take out the trash with Yuki. Turu then lent his tracksuit to Sakura. When alone with Yuki, Sakura confirmed Yuki and Turu's relationship. Of course, Yuki answered that they were just friends. A few days later, Sakura returned Turu's tracksuit and did not forget to give Turu a cake as her gratitude. Unexpectedly, it turned out that Turu liked the cake that Sakura gave him. Since then, Sakura often gave Turu the cakes she made. Hori noticed Yuki's jealousy was showing when Sakura was with Turu recently. Having been friends with Yuki for a long time, Hori could understand her. Yuki wasn't one to say what she wanted or liked. Like in the bookstore, instead of keeping the book she wanted, Yuki gave it to someone else. On the other hand, Yuki tried to make cakes to keep up with Sakura. Even though her first try wasn't great, she got good feedback from Hori, Miyamura, and most importantly, Turu. Miyamura then went to Hokkaido for five days. Hori also had trouble getting news from Miyamura because her cell phone battery had run out. The last message Hori received was when Miyamura had just arrived in Hokkaido, and after that he immediately disappeared. On the day of his return, without waiting to hear from Miyamura, Hori went straight to his apartment. Unexpectedly, they collided in front of the elevator. After chatting with her girlfriends, Hori thought she couldn't act cute. But she finally tried her friend's suggestion to act cute in front of Miyamura to no avail. 
But that was fine for Miyamura, because he loved Hori just as she was. In his dream, Miyamura saw himself 10 years ago. In the dream, he saw his tracksuit thrown away. Miyamura also hated friendship because he was always isolated and hated all fun things. Miyamura saw himself as someone who would rather die than live like that, but he did not necessarily justify it. Miyamura then asked himself 10 years ago to wait because soon he would find a friend who would change his life. Switching from Miyamura, Sengoku looked perfect in the eyes of all Katajiri High School students. In Rimi's eyes, Sengoku was a weak man, but a hard worker. He was also not someone who quickly changed his mind. Their closeness started from Remy's initiative to talk about books with him. Sengoku often lent books to Remy. He even invited Remy to go to his family's small library. That library was also a place where they expressed their feelings for each other. While Miyamura's leg was being experimented on by Hori, he placed his foot on Hori's head. Because Hori was usually the one who liked to attack him first. But Hori wasn't angry and was even provoked to see Miyamura's ruthless attitude towards her. Although in the end, it didn't go smoothly. After school, Turu helped Yuki to reject Akani Yanagi, the person who confessed his feelings and pretended to be her boyfriend. Hori and Miyamura also came along to watch over them. How surprised they were when they saw the person Yuki had just rejected. The man was very handsome. On their way home, Hori and Miyamura ran into two of Miyamura's middle school friends. They weren't being friendly at all and instead insulted Miyamura. Annoyed at the sight of many female students surrounding Miyamura, Hori immediately vented her anger. Hori suddenly beat them until they were severely injured. Still holding on to her obsession, Hori ordered Miyamura to be mean to her, from sending Hori away to hitting her in front of Miyamura's middle school friends. Hori was strangely enjoying and happy with it. Miyamura was the only one feeling guilty. After having a strange dream, Makio Tanahara immediately called Miyamura. But unfortunately, Miyamura didn't pick up the phone. Tanahara then came to Miyamura's workplace. He said he would return the day after tomorrow and ordered cheesecake and fruit tart, two each. Tanihara tried to get along with Miyamura to make amends for the past. In Hori's room, Miyamura saw Hori's middle school memory book. When asked about Miyamura's memory book, he said he wanted to throw it away. Even though he finally gave up on it, Miyamura felt that even he could get along better with Tanihara now. He believed that it was impossible in this world for people who had no friends at all. News of Yuki and Turu's pretend relationship started to spread even to Sakura. Not wanting Sakura to feel bad about this, Yuki finally told Rimi that her relationship with Turu was pretending. Yuki didn't want that fake relationship to end badly, let alone hurt others. Yuki had not been to school for a week. She didn't even contact Hori and the rest of her friends. Yuki's older sister, Miki Yoshikawa, knew that Yuki wanted something that she would never reveal. But finally, one message from Turu made her go to school the next day. Turu and Yuki finally talked on the school roof. Turu said that Sakura didn't ask for answers when she confessed her feelings because she assumed that Turu and Yuki were dating. Turu also had no intention of clearing up the misunderstanding. Because Turu focused on Yuki, on the other hand, Sakura was crying loudly after seeing Turu walking with Yuki in the distance. She cried over her feelings that had been rejected long before she could express them. Sakura. <laughs> Now Yanagi was starting to join the student council room with the others. They seemed to be getting close. Even Yanagi got into silly fights with the others, showing how close they all were. Miyamura also helped Sawada to get used to boys. After talking to Turu and Sengoku, there was no bad reaction from Sawada. But when Hara came with his excited behavior, Sawada started to get scared and felt uncomfortable. On another day, Sawada again met Yura, who was sick and didn't talk much for fear of infecting others. This made Sawada think that Iyer was angry with her. But after Yura recovered, he acted up again and made Sawada run away. Yura became a different person when he was at home. He became calm and not noisy like when he was at school. He also didn't get along with his little sister, Motoko Yura. Even so, Yura was very caring and cared for his younger sister. Yura knew how hard Motoko studied. 
So when a teacher laughed at Motoko's low grades to enter high school, Yura didn't accept it. He even went to ask Hori to tutor Motoko until the high school entrance exams. Yura also bought Motoko an amulet for her exam success. One day Yuki went to Turu's house to play a game. However, today her arrival seemed to be hidden, making her thought that Turu was embarrassed to invite her home. But it turned out that Turu had a curious maid who would report whatever Turu did. They then spent their time playing games and eating cake. Turu felt very happy with his current relationship with Yuki. In the student council room, Rami invited Sengoku to have dinner at her house on Christmas Eve. Sengoku firmly refused because Sengoku felt uncomfortable with the collection of insects in Rami's room. Everyone spent Christmas Eve differently. Yanagi was walking and met Yuki's older sister. Meanwhile, Tanihara spent time at home with his older brother. On the other hand, Turu went for a walk with Yuki. Yura accompanied Motoko, who was studying for exams. Sengoku finally ventured to go to Rimi's house. Shindo was with Chika, while Sakura spent time alone. Besides that, at Hori's house, everyone was waiting for Miyamura to deliver the cakes they ordered. Hori's family looked sad that Miyamura couldn't spend Christmas Eve with them because he had to work. Miyamura only stopped by briefly and had to hurry back to the shop. On the way, when dropping Miyamura off, Hori said that although she didn't know much about Miyamura, she wanted Miyamura to always be by her side. Miyamura's answer was beyond expectations. Miyamura asked Hori to marry him. But Hori was being herself and didn't care who said those words. Their high school years were almost over. In his reverie, Miyamura thought again that if the little incident he and Hori, and also with the others had not happened, things wouldn't be like this. His high school life would be empty and not much different from his elementary and middle school life. Hori believed whatever happened right now was fate. The arrival of Hori and the rest of her friends in Miyamura's life was a fate that was hard to imagine. And that was the truth. At the graduation ceremony, Sengoku gave a speech. Unexpectedly, Miyamura sneezed and instead made Sengoku's focus dispersed. After that, Miyamura went to the school's roof and tried to talk to himself, who was still overcome by a gloomy feeling and had no friends. Until someone interrupted his reverie to ask him to take a photo with the others. On the final high school day, Sakura confessed her feelings to Turu. She thanked Turu for wanting to be a part of her beautiful high school life. Outside, Kiyosuke was waiting for his favorite child, Miyamura, to take a photo together. The students who saw that even thought that Kiyosuke was Miyamura's father. Hori became irritated seeing that. Motoko, who picked up Yura at school, also experienced culture shock because for the first time, she saw Yura as a different person who was always so excited and noisy. Hori and Miyamura then walked hand in hand. Miyamura had never felt this close to anyone before except Hori. Miyamura never stopped feeling grateful to have Hori, who had changed his high school days to be better. With the end of their high school years, this anime ends. Thank you so much for watching this video from the beginning to the end. Like this video if you enjoyed watching it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the other video.